Hello everybody and welcome to episode 218 of the Nine Years Podcast with myself, Nick Draper. Joined as always by the face of the BBC Sport website, Mr Stuart Deacons and George Jones as well. Later, we are going to be joined by Joe Piggott and Scott Wagstaff to discuss the 2018-19 Great Escape and the current season and how that might conclude. For now, Stu, George and myself, uh, we are going to discuss, to finish off our season reviews of Kings Meadow, one season that we haven't talked about in great depth yet, which is the first great escape in the Football League, which was 2012-2013, which we stayed up on the last day of the season against Fleetwood Town. However, before we get into that, Stu and George, I'm going to give the listeners a little bit of a secret. We've already spoken to Joe and Scott. That interview has been recorded and in the bag, and I'm going to edit this together so it all makes sense chronologically. However, what this means is, is that I can already tell you that at some point during the interview with Scott and Joe, Stu turns to me and he says, um, one more question, this was to Scott Wagstaff, he said, I've got one more question before Nick finishes you off, Scott. <laughs> I'd just like to say that we were recording the interview over Zoom, Scott and I were not in the same room, and there was nothing like that going on, for those of you so minded. I've got to be honest, when you said that, I was biting my tongue so hard, <laughs> I knew if I said anything, or if I reacted, that would have gone south very quickly, so to speak. Anyway, that's, let's go on with 2012 and 2013. Um, we stayed up the last day, as I said, with a 2 on win over Fleetwood Town. That, for me, was somewhat anticlimactic, because I always knew we were going to beat Fleetwood on the last day. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. The highlight for me was when we got the equaliser against Gillingham the previous week. You, did you share my feelings on that, or did you think that Fleetwood was still a bit of a 50-50 for us? Yeah, I think I think the fact it was in our hands on that sort of side of it, memory. Um, I think that the Gillingham was, was a big result um, on that side of it. Um, but yeah, nervous because we'd never done it before. So, you know, we hadn't... We'd always, we'd always been on, a, on an upward journey, haven't we? Do you know what I mean? Promotion, promotion. Not really ever been in relegation trouble at all. Um, so, yeah, you sort of think... Not got not got much experience, but the window helped us. As we said, we spoke to New Ardu a little while ago, didn't we? Um, the experience that come in that window meant that we we had a good chance. But yeah, still nervous on that. But hey, Jack Mixon that season was our was our saviour, wasn't he? George, how many games of that season did you see? Of that season, I think I only missed one league game. What do you mean only missed? I'm disappointed. That means you missed one. Which one yeah. did you? Miss? I believe it was the 6-2 away to Burton. Were you on holiday? On the Tuesday night. Yeah, I was still on holiday. <sighs> Have I told this story on the podcast to you about Burton 6-2? I've told you this many times, but I can't remember if I've said it on the podcast. The 6-2? Yeah. The one where yeah. I got, it was midweek, as George says, I got the coach up. There was a lot of traffic. We got there just as the game was kicking off and Burton hit the post in the first minute and then they scored a minute later and they went on to absolutely hammer us. And on the coach on the way home... I was informed that we had let the same player score on six occasions. I'll let you figure out why that person made that mistake. <laughs> you did tell somewhat, me that. Yeah. Somewhat a bit awkward when I had to reveal that, no, it was not the same player that scored all six goals. Anyway. I have to say, that week, though, was a nightmare. Because obviously, don't forget, we went to Bradford yeah. on a Saturday. And yeah. I, I'll never forget that. I mean, six 6-2, I remember, not a night. I like Burton, but I don't like him now. Well, I do like but Bradford, I remember, I literally got a, a, a chicken and balty pie. I, we'd just got a train. I walked all the way up to the top of the stand, sat down, looked up, and, quit, and um, said I'd let one go through his hands or something. And then it just turned out to be, a, oh, yeah, just don't want to talk about it. I'm, I'm, I mean, this was the seriously the beginning of the end for Terry Brown. The, that sort of five-day period of the 6-2 and the 5-1. And, I mean, the Curtis Haynes own Brown... Uh, Curtis Haynes Brown own goal away to Bradford that day. I'll never, never. Oh, the Yo, the Yo, was it the Yeovil? Yeah, the Yeovil left he? back. Yeah, he, like, um, yeah, he sl- he s- somehow slid in in his own six yard box and tapped across in with no one anywhere near him. On his debut, and it was on his debut, and it's just again, it was that moment of. It was then I realised, you know, this isn't a blip. We're in trouble if this is where we are, and I think that was that was a moment. I think people knew Terry had sort of run out of time with us. Well, we knew in pre-season, didn't we? Let's be honest. We lost 7-0 at home to Reading. 
Yeah, uh, and with uh, Ben McNamara in goal, yeah. who I'm still convinced we only signed because we had a charity cricket match that summer and we wanted an Aussie. I'm still well, convinced was, that's the only reason we got him on. He was probably worse than Ben Wilson, wasn't he? Do you know what I mean? But we, we, all, we also, you know, we conceded four against Preston North End, four against the West Ham eleven. Pre-season was pretty rubbish, wasn't it? And if I remember properly, when I was playing tricks, we all thought that Terry Proddy would actually hand, would walk off, you know, walk out, or not walk out, but would quit after the Bradford game. Um, and that was only the third game in. Yeah. It was the third league game, but don't forget we'd also had the Stevenage League Cup. The season started with the League Cup that season. And um, we didn't turn up away at Stevenage that night, got turned over really easily. I think that was the debut of Louis Harris, which is up there with the worst player ever to play for AFC Wimbledon. Um, and that was, uh, Terry Brown, what, was it seven or eight games of that season he finally did, however it happened, joint decision, whether he stepped It was after Torquay, wasn't it? When Howe. Yeah, it was after, yeah, Torquay was the seventh league game that season. Off his yeah. backside, when Howe, wasn't it? Yeah, and then uh, Jolly got sent off after that, at the end, didn't he? Well... That was, I can never forget, because I think we had a 1-0 defeat to Rochdale as well that season around the same time. I can't remember. Um, I'll have to go back through and just check my records. But wasn't it the Torquay game, Stu? I think if I remember correctly, Christian Jolly, he came on. We played him right wing. He was tearing the uh, Torquay left-hand side. He was tearing them apart. And then, just as we were getting on top of the game, we made a substitution. We moved Jolly to left back. And it totally destroyed any chance we had in that game. And I thought at that point, I thought that was the decision that stuck in my head for when I thought, Terry, that's probably, sad as it was, time to say goodbye. And his lap of honour at the end yeah. sort of burned it, didn't it? Yeah, and I, th- I think that's the thing. Every, everyone on the ground that night knew that was the end of it. It wasn't, I mean, if I remember correctly, I mean, I don't have a great memory at the time, but I still don't remember much communication from the club saying it's this or bust or... <clears throat> you know, much in the build-up. There was something came out post-Bradford, if I remember, but not much around the time of that Torquay game. But still, everyone in the ground knew that that was it. That was the end of it. And then I'm I'm glad in a way that Terry ended with a lap of honour, which is, you know, Neil and Wally obviously didn't get the opportunity to do due to the circumstances they left under. Yeah, and we have to remember the club was still quite young then, wasn't it? And... And yeah, we got to the ground and there was rumours going around like anything that basically had been told, if you don't win or you know, if you lose it, then it's just game over. Um, and it was a really sad night. It was a really sad night. But ultimately, you know, it had to happen. It had to happen. And um, it wasn't a nice, it wasn't a nice evening. You don't want to, you don't want a manager who'd done so well for us to leave in that way. Um, but we, we had to make the decision. And then Neil came in and there was an immediate bounce. We got four points from his first two games and we picked up a great win away at York, a 3 0 win. But generally, things were still pretty poor because the squad, as Neil said himself, the squad was so weak and he needed reinforcements and what have you. And Stu said the window was key in keeping us up that year. Gary Alexander would have been key in that one, I imagine you're thinking of. Brennan Dickinson, which is a strange name to talk about now, considering where he's ended up playing at a later date. But I thought he was an excellent signing for us. Who else for you, Stuart, was sort of key? And you've mentioned Jack Nidson, obviously, but who else was key for you that oh, year? The massive, yeah, there was three 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 players in terms of Adam Bennett come in, uh, which was a cat he was a captain at Cheltenham, so finally we had a leader at the back. Uh Harry Pell, remember, come in uh for a fee at that time. And um hey look, Harry Pell was doing well at, at Cheltenham now. He, he's not he's not a bad player in terms of he's still got a decent career. Uh, and don't forget Chris Hussey come back. Um on loan from Coventry, or was it loan, or was it no? Yeah, she coming on. Uh, I think we got a fee, and then we ended up getting him back for next to nothing, didn't we? So, I think we just pulled in some players that we knew could do the job. And the, the key thing was having leaders at, as much as we can at each end of the pitch. And we had that in Gary Alexander and Adam Bennett, and um, yeah, in the end that was enough. But hey, let's be fair; it was still we still had to hit playoff form to get out of trouble. That's how desperate we in trouble we were. I mean, I mean, for me, my memories around that January time of was, you know, I think it was, it might have actually been New Year's Day itself, the way to Torquay when we won three two. Um, because I remember they equalised in the last minute to make it two all in the 90th minute, and then we scored. I think, I think it was a penalty at, right at the end to make it three two. And for me, that was a moment which was a real turning point and gave us the momentum of. I think we won the following week as well, and it was. Then we started getting new signings in. Peter Sweeney came in and it just started to build momentum. But for me, it was that talky away game where momentum really started to turn in our favour. 
And when mentioning the signings of that season, I can't believe Stu missed out the legend that is Kelly Yuga. I cannot believe you missed out on the influential players that kept us up that year. <laughs> He's the guy that does all the surveys. I keep seeing him a Yuga poll that they keep doing. <laughs> but Joel, we always moan about, we always moan, not moan, but there's always questions in there about um, Neil Hardy signings. But let's not forget, we got um, Yado Mambo on loan that year, who's now actually, you know, big, big man mountain. And, uh, but also, we went through, went through a lot of goalkeepers. Don't forget Neil Sullivan coming to us and then had the, I don't know what he walked in, but walked into the Milton, you know, the Milton Keynes away FA Cup game straight away, bless him. Um, and then, do you know what, a player that I, I really felt sad that nothing really happened was John Sullivan. Uh, who come in? Um, I remember last game of the season. You, I, obviously, we were down the other end, it weren't we? And the, he was literally going mad on that penalty. Um, and then, if I remember properly, he decided to sign for Pompey. Is that right? Instead of us? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, unfortunately, he has had mental health issues, but now is is having a career out in in America as a as a realtor um, out there. But I felt he's a good goalkeeper, and sometimes it's about choices in life, isn't it? I thought he should stay with us. What's he doing in America? A real a realtor? Oh, I don't know what it's called. A they realtor? don't call them estate agents, do they out there? Yeah, a realtor. Yeah, rela- re- realtor? Realtor. A relator. Uh, not a re- no, no. He sells oh. houses. Okay, let's stick with, yeah, all right, cool. Um, I mean, George, you've mentioned the Torquay game. There's one game that sticks out in my head, which is all the shot away, and unfortunately, a key memory of this 1-0 win, which... I thought, we'd, I thought we'd done it. But at that point, when we won one at shot, I was 100% convinced there was going to be no issue whatsoever in us staying up. And then a few days later, we went to Atkinson and got turned over 4-0. But I do remember Terry Brown being interviewed on the pitch at half-time at shot, And he said, not a problem. Both teams are going to stay up. No issues. He wasn't concerned in any way, which way. Both teams were fine. Uh, we were. shot weren't and have never returned unfortunately um it seemed to be like it was all going well and we were all fine and then Stu, we had three def- in the last six we only won one of the last six we had a bit of a, a nosedive was that the pressure of just getting over the line do you think i think it's just down the form we had to put in i think we just had to put so much effort there was a lot of players buying on their feet and even though we've got players that were experienced that's the thing you know experience brings you old age um so fitness obviously weren't great i remember buying it at home i remember that well yeah, uh, where you know we just didn't do enough, you know. They're trying to get your points, so you know we wanted to make sure we were is in our hands. So you know to lose a leg goal against Barnet, I thought it was dead then. If I'm being true, we went to Bristol Rovers after that and the the late goal. Um, so yeah, we had. Do you know what? We done so well to stay up, but it was a slog. It was a slog. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I think Stu, you got it pretty much spot on there. I mean, in those last six games the three that we lost we lost all of them within the last 15 minutes uh just double check that and it's it just goes to show with that stage and i mean i know neil talked about it extensively when he came on last week and talked about how much the fitness level was lacking when he came in i think that really started to show towards the end of the season but you know the fact that those last sort of three games that we needed um exeter Gillingham, and fleetwood the fact that they were all high scoring just goes to show how dead on our feet the players were because defensively we'd fallen off a cliff by that point in the season, which you can see. And let's not forget, and you know, Nick and I remember discussing this at the time, Terry Brown, bless him, you know, league experience, but he spent all his budget in the opening window. He literally came the budget. Now, if you go through the, you know, if you go through the signings, Curtis Asano, Louis Harris, who from, from rumour has it that um, Stuart Cash was recommended it by somebody near the Wolves. Well, I hope he's not a friend anymore. Um, Stacey Long, Warren Cummings, Warren Cummings from Premiership Bournemouth, remember? They weren't Premiership at the time. You know, Pim come in. Uh, it's just, when you look at the money we spent, Neil come in with hardly any money. So, you know, to say he done a great job, he had no money to spend. Terry spent a budget, and that was just an experience that we allowed that to happen. Louis Harris, I think of Ali Deer when I think of Louis Harris. It's a very similar story, those two. Anyway, um, we did manage to stay up in the end. Like you say, Neil did a fantastic job. Got us over the line. Happy days. Celebrations. We had done it. And it was against Fleetwood. And Fleetwood, just one of those clubs that just seemed to keep... Talk about the story of AFC Wimbledon. They're a name that will be remembered, I think, when people look back over, just in key moments. Playoff semi-finals and home defeats just before FA Cup ties and games that should have been called off because we were playing in a swimming pool. But... 
that was the season that was 2012-13. Before we get on to 2018-19 with Scott and Joe, George, you have a Paul Osu for which Stu and I are going to pit our wits against each other. Yes, yeah, so for anyone who hasn't listened before, it's, it's three rounds. Yeah, there must, must be one. Before. Yeah, there must be one Wimbledon fan. There might be one Wimbledon fan who hasn't listened to us yet. But, but where you, you been? Never know. Where you been? <laughs> yeah, it's someone I know, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> so it's, get, it's a guest of player game, and it's three rounds of clues. The first round of clues is five players this player has played with. The second round of clues is two managers he's played under, and then there's a final giveaway clue at the end. Um, so the well, you, five... you say that, George, but your giveaway clues at the end are rubbish. Yeah, well, we're still meant to be up partly challenging. But the last one, I think you gave us his star sign. Was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, that's easier than the one I've given you this week for the giveaway clue, so I hope you've got it by then. Right, okay, um, go on. So the five players are Danny Murphy, Charlie Daniels, Adebayo Akinfenwa, Callum Kennedy and Jake Jervis. That's good, because Count Kennedy and Adebayo Akinfenwa have barely played for anyone. Um, when, <laughs> where was this, where was this play, was this linked to our guests today, in any way? Yes, it, he, he's bit, he was at the club at the same time as I today. He's not a current, he's a current player or not a current player? I'm not going to make it that easy. <laughs> Jake, Jervis, Jake Jervis spent his lovely time, loving us, sorry, um, a lovely time with Luton Plymouth. Um, Danny Murphy would be what? Crew? Back at, back That's probably. too far back though, surely. Who else do you play after that? Fulham, I'm thinking. Okay. Um, who's that one, George? Danny, I, 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 go through them again. Um, Danny Murphy, Charlie Daniels, uh, Adebayo Akinfenwa, Callum Kennedy and Jake Jervis. Nothing springs to mind. Nick? No, I mean, I'm going off Danny Murphy and I'm thinking... It, it's crew Liverpool Fulham in my head, and it's realistically going to be Fulham. Did he play? Was there a young player in his time at Fulham that has since gone on, or was, were they a young player at Fulham at the same time as Danny Murphy? That's what I'm trying to work out. Yeah. Bayo. Mm. Bayo's played for everybody. Literally everybody. No, I can't think of all. No. George, round two. Okay, so the managerial clues are Martin Ling and Alan Nil. You can probably all tell by the silence that George has done us on this one. Alan Nil, was he at Berry at some point? Nil was, yeah. He was a scumple. Alan Nil was a scumple. Northampton. Torquay as well. Didn't he finish Torquay? <clears throat> I think he I did, think, yeah. I can't think of one player. Jake Jervis. Would it have been Jake Jervis when he was here? So, would that be the connection? Um, who, was, who, who played with Jake Jervis when he was here? Uh, and it's old. Hmm. It's got to be a striker. No, not a striker. I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking last season, the Great Escape season, we get someone in it was, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to go around about James Hansen. No. Not James Hansen. I thought about James Hansen. That's a good one, actually. It's got to like Dwarf as well. Liam Trotter. No, it's not Liam Trotter. Damn. It would be nice if it would be on the last podcast. <laughs> well, Nick, you've got loads of edit to do, which is good. The Berry, <laughs> the Berry thing... Uh, who was the other manager? Martin Ling? Yeah. <sighs> See, I think that's a Torquay link. Yeah, you're right. It could be a Torquay link. Did, did Jake Jervis play for Torquay then? Uh, I'm not sure. Because if there's a Torquay link, Jake Jervis has got a link in somewhere. So if it, it does, it's got to be someone that played with Jake Jervis here that was with him. Do you know what, George? If this is a player that's played with... Joe Pickett and Scott Wagstaff, right? We could just chuck names at you from the squads over the last two seasons until we get that one. Yeah, but where's the fun in that? Yeah, there'll be no fun in it at all. Um, Tom Saws. No, not Tom Saws. Quizzy Appia. No, not Quessy. Should we have the final giveaway clue that's yeah, not really a giveaway? Um, 
this player had 30 goal involvements in 160 games for us. Goal involvements? Goal involvements. He was on the you pitch. Mean, you mean assists? He, goals and assists. Right, OK. How many games for us? 160. Barry Fuller? No. Anthony Wordsworth? No. No. Who have, we got, who have we got playing for us now that's played that many? Did Josh Larger? No. 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 Andy Barcham? Yes. Yay! Andy Barcham is correct. Spurs. Hooray. Yeah. So, um, Danny Murphy. Yeah. Danny Murphy. Danny Murphy at Spurs. Charlie Daniels at Lake Norian. I blame, I blame Nick because he was going along the Fulham route. Can um, I just ask one question? Who is Charlie Daniels? He plays for Bournemouth currently. Who are Bournemouth? <laughs> So when you said that, I thought it was Warren Cummings because he said it really early. Yeah. And then I was like, maybe not. Yeah. So he played with Daniels at Orient, Bayo at Gillingham, Cal Kennedy at Scunthorpe, and he played with Jake Jervis at Portsmouth. <laughs> How many Jake Jervis was at Portsmouth, which I was shocked to find out. I'll be honest. Jake Jervis has played for everyone. How has Andy Bartram not got a club as well, by the way? Yeah. Mm. Find that amazing. Oh, Surprise. Cheers, George. Though. Anyway, thank you for that, George. Uh, we need to work on those last final clues because, um, <laughs> yeah, 30 goal involvements. I don't mean anything to me. No, and I still, I, Charlie Daniels, I mean, I just don't. Who the hell? He might as well <laughs> said he lives at number three in his street. That's the most random thing you said to us. Literally. <laughs> oh, well, we got there in the end. Thank you. So we've now been joined by Scott Wagstaff and Joe Piggott to discuss our final, well, I was going to say two seasons, season and two-thirds at Kings Meadow. Uh, Joe, second time you've been on with us this summer. I uh, hear you just been out on the golf course, is that right? No, I've just been out on my bike. Oh, OK, nice. Yeah. Sorry, yes. <laughs> when George messaged me about um, coming on a bike too, I was still... Lying around, so that's that's cycling hard to get back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very much appreciated that you've taken the time to speak to us. I can imagine out in this weather, though, cycling in this weather, you must be like sweating buckets. Yeah, I. Uh, to be honest, there's nothing else to do. So. <laughs> Might as well. Right, you should see his gear, lads. Yeah, get on his gear. I wouldn't be worried about the bike. <laughs> Try and enjoy it as much as I can. We've also been joined today for the first time, uh, Scott Wagstaff. And before we go any further, we have to say congratulations, Scott, on the birth of your baby daughter, Isabella. We've got that right? Yeah, thank you very much. Tough eight, nine weeks, to be fair. Um, she's just had her jabs as well yesterday, uh, Tuesday. It's, uh, it's a bit of a whirlwind, really, because obviously no one can see her at the minute. It's under this lockdown, so it's been a little bit frustrating uh, with that. But apart from that, it's, it's been nice to sort of be at home with her and, and obviously the missus as well. Yeah, I mean, in some respects, I suppose it's kind of an ideal time for you, I suppose, <laughs> in that you get to spend lots of time with her. But also, yeah, I hadn't even thought about it. Not being able to see, I guess, like grandparents, other family and stuff like that. None of that, I suppose. It's all Zoom meetings and such. Well, yeah, I think obviously they've, they've, they've come, to the, come to the back garden a couple of times, which is, yeah. which I don't know if it's legal or illegal or what. <laughs> um, but no, obviously, they've, they've tried to see her through, the, through like the conservatory and, and things like that. So it's, it has been a bit strange, um, but... Obviously, I think it was it was going to be the. I would have had to miss the Tramier game because she was born. Uh, I think before she went into labour, the the Tramier game. So it's uh, it's a bit of a blessing in disguise that I haven't I managed to miss any games. But um, we would have won yeah, that. Yeah, so that, that really well. <laughs> yeah, but probably would have done better without me. To be fair, <laughs> it's funny you mention that actually because um, as we're recording, a statement's come out from the EFL today. So we now know that the option of avoiding the season is not there anymore. We're either going to be playing to a conclusion or we're going to curtail it and decide it on points per game, which would keep us up above Tranmere by, George, I forgot this right, 0 0.06 points. Is that right, George? Yeah, something like that. We would take it, obviously. But do you, like, Joe, do you have a preference for how the season finishes now at this point? Would you rather get out and pick play it or you're not bothered? George, can I see your workings on that, please? On that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, Obviously, I'd love to play, but realistically, I don't think there's, I don't think there's much chance for really of us getting back out there. Um, but yeah, I've, I mean, it's been lovely to be able to go back, but 
but I just don't think the option is there really, to be honest. If we were going to play out the season, I'm guessing we're then looking at knocking next season back and maybe a later start for that, and it throws everything into chaos, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, exactly that. Um, it's such a hard, it's a hard thing to talk about because as players, obviously, we get paid to play, but um, yeah, you just got to look at some of the members of the squad who've got newborns and stuff, and you know, you really do have to think about your family as well. So, yeah, no, it's a real tough one, but I can't see it. I can't see it being finished. It'll be done on a point to the game, probably, I think. There's not enough teams in our league that can afford to go the rest of the season with no data sheets and other income from match days and have to pay out for all the tests and all the rest of it. I mean, what, what would happen if we played away, for example, like all the way at Rochdale? What, what would we do? Just stay in a hotel the night before? How? Yeah. The hotels aren't even open. Like, what, what, what would we do? And we'd all have to travel separate. We'd have to travel separate as well. Yeah. They're obviously talking about playoffs and things like that. It doesn't work unless you spend, you know, you're spending yeah. millions of pounds to make it it can't work unless you've got that sort of money in the bank. I think the, pre- the and that's the thing. The prem, the prem clubs can do it, and the champ clubs can do it. But obviously, I think the League One and League Two, it will be very difficult to try yeah. and get it, get it going again. Like like you said, with the testing and and everything else around it, um, it's it's going to take a lot to sort of get it going again. Don't be wrong; we'd love to to go back playing and and this and that. But I just I, I don't know. I, I just can't see it happening for for our league and and League Two because of the money. <laughs> That's the surrounding it all, but obviously we'll find out in, in good time, I think. I mean, the other issue is that playoffs, apparently, whatever is chosen, playoffs will be going ahead. Could you imagine getting to a playoff final at yeah. Wembley with no one there? Yeah, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, only crap. reason. Well, it's not obviously the only reason. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Like, that's the thing. It's obviously you, you, you've obviously played there, Pigs, and you scored the, the one in extra time, which you you t- talked about a million times to us and obviously the penalty as well <laughs> for South End. Uh, but no, I just keep saying it. It's, it's not one my of fault. Them. You, 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 I know, I know. But it's one of them, I think, you, that's one of the reasons you play football is, is to play in front of fans and it, we, we've we both played in the games where it's behind closed doors and, and they're terrible. They, they are so bad. You know I mean, it doesn't, really it doesn't, feel it doesn't like matter where game. it is though, does it? Just no yeah. fans. Just, it doesn't matter what, what ground you're at without fans. Yeah. It's absolutely nothing. It's not the same. No, it's it's not the same because you just you don't really get that buzz. That yeah, the, buzz, the, mo- the mo- uh, motivation's not really. Well, it, obviously you're still motivated you're playing football and you love doing that, but it's you know it's the last minute winners and stuff like that. It's just not the same without the fans. But it is that edge as well, is it? We were. Um, I remember we were talking to Ben Hodges a little while ago, and I remember saying to him, if we did restart, we had Tranmere obviously to play at home. We had quite a few teams around us. You can imagine it obviously takes away having home advantage against Tranmere is massive, but if you play behind closed doors, it takes away any advantage you've got. And it would also becomes a mental thing, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. The second that if we play them at home, they all have to drive down separately, and that takes about seven hours from Merseyside. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably have the upper end. <laughs> all coming out stiff and stuff, aren't they? Yeah. How, yeah. how, would, you, how would you feel, no, Scott? Obviously, obviously, we. It's all about individual. You know. We all, in this situation, we're all about looking after our family and stuff like that. And I, I noticed today that um, Conte isn't training at Chelsea. He'd done the first day and didn't do the second day um, for whatever reason. It's probably more a case that he didn't get a benefit of stuff. From your point of view, you've just got a young child. Um, you know, think about family. Would you, would you be? Com- I'm not. I'm not trying to be on the spot here, but would you be comfortable to play knowing that you're going home to your family? That must surely play on someone's mind. Or will be playing your mind. Yeah, definitely. I think we've, like, to be honest with me and the missus have discussed it quite a lot. Obviously, we're still in limbo of what we're going to be doing. Um, it's a it's a very difficult situation to be in. And, and like you said, um, if it was to come down to it, I'd have to make a decision on if I wanted to, if I was going to put my, obviously, my daughter in, in jeopardy um, with, obviously, this this disease. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, it's a, it's a really, really tough one. And obviously, I'd, if, if I didn't have kids, I probably wouldn't think twice about it. But now, obviously, you have to sort of think about it, and it's it's a difficult sort of one to to put into perspective. I don't, I really don't know what I'd do. I really don't know what I'd do because uh, it's, it's, it just does put your whole mind at, in a different sort of space now. With with obviously having a family, a young family, and and uh, you do you see things saying that, that kids are all right, little babies are all right, and things like that. But you just don't know. I don't think you can never know. Um, so I do. I've obviously seen um, Troy Deeney and 
and uh, Danny Rose say, say things about their family and, and it does sort of go into your mind and you sort of think, oh, should I, shouldn't I, and, and things like that. So we just have to wait and see what does happen. But I'll, I'll definitely be thinking hard, long and hard about it if obviously I was to come back or not. I think next Friday is when votes are taken and so we should actually know. It seems to be dragging on for a long time. I think we all just want that certainty of knowing exactly what's going to happen. Next Friday, oh yeah? Not even this Friday. I heard next Friday, um, Stu. Yeah, they're, they're dragging their heels. It's crazy. I, I can't imagine you guys, you know, mm. sitting there training and trying to keep yourself in sort of any sort of match condition. But we believe it's going to be Friday, uh, next Friday. So, again, another week. Is Mickey. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I don't see why uh, a decision can't be made in it. Um, and even the championship haven't yet even decided what they're going to do. I think they're waiting for the Premier League to, to go there in. But, um, yeah, next Friday. <laughs> That's the start of June. Yeah. <laughs> right. the yeah, like, yeah. Well, you've got Even to take still. into account as well, obviously, the out of, out of contract players as well. There's, I think we've got quite a few out of contract players um, for next season. So I don't know how they're going to sort of work around that as well if it was to continue. I think a lot of players um, would probably think they don't want to carry on. If they got injured and they weren't going to be staying there for next season, why would they carry on and play? Um, so they've got, obviously, clubs would have to take that into account as well. So it's it's a, it's a very sticky situation, I think, that, that a lot of clubs are going to be in. And I don't know, sort of know how they're going to they're gonna go. To be honest with me, I, I can't see the season carrying on. Um, but there's a lot to sort of look into with with players out of contract as well, I think. Yeah, but even if we went back, what would training be like for the first three weeks? We'd be able to touch each other. Not, so not just, it's pointless. It's pointless. That's, probably, that's probably a good thing. I don't have to go close to you then. Yeah. Stack all the time, you. <laughs> Mate, we'd be like that Barclays advert. Loves a naughty tackle in training. This kid walking football. <laughs> we'd be like. <laughs> it's in three. It's in three phases, isn't it? Phase one is where you. I think you basically kick ball amongst yourself, and then isn't it second phase? I think you can go with five people, um, and then gradually. Did you? Did yeah. you guys watch the Bundesliga at all on the weekend? Did you, did yeah, you I hate. Do you know what? I hated yeah. every minute of it. I hated it. Like I watched the uh, watched the Dortmund game. Both teams, well, Schalke, Schalke or whatever they they were terrible. But both teams just so rusty. You, you could see that they hadn't kicked the ball for God knows how long. And just the atmosphere, the whole thing, I thought was just it just didn't didn't make me feel comfortable. When it didn't make me want to think, oh, I can't wait to go back out there. But um, which sounds ridiculous for me to say that, but it just didn't. No, I agree. I, I, I found it, what struck me was when you had the players going in on separate entrances with the face masks on, and then they would come down yeah. to take it off, and then they would be in close contact with each other. It, I, it, it just seemed two different worlds, and you, you know, you had, on the substitutes bench, you had them two metres apart along the stand. Now, we couldn't do yeah. that at Kibedo. You know, you could go, you guys on the bench, you know. You're stuck, yeah. You know, so, yeah. Oh, I, no chance. Yeah. Imagine if you're you're at the end of the stand and the manager wants you to warm up. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sprint the whole way down the stand, tap you on the shoulder, and tell you, and then you have to go and warm up. Well, your warm up could be going up the step, <laughs> couldn't it, on the John Green stand? That could be warm up. Yeah, actually, everyone could have walkie talkies. We do that. Like yeah. the match, use the match day security's walkie talkies. Yeah, properly disinfected ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Got true. That. Games in front of no fans, and um, well, let's we'll, we'll tie this in with how the season was going up until the point we had to go to lockdown and what have you. Um, you have kind of had an experience of playing in front of no fans, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot and get you to say anything difficult about a particular club, but we did play away at Milton Keynes this year, which is, in a sense, playing in front of a largely empty stadium. Um, Joe, you've played a couple of times now there with us. What do you, how do you find that fixture when we're there in terms of? the swathes of empty seats does that change is it difficult for the mentality of the game because obviously for us it's a huge game against a you know it's a difficult fixture and there's all sorts of implications but then when you get there and as a fan we all feel it we get there and we're just that and what is just essentially in it there's no one there and all of a sudden the atmosphere just seems to change straight away because of that did you find that yourselves um yeah well i've played there obviously i've played there once um very very bad afternoon that but um Yes, yeah, obviously the pitch, the pitch is nice, but it's, <laughs> that's all. That almost feels like behind closed doors game. And also, they put 
they put our, our fans right in the corner, didn't they? Yeah. Which, you know, I mean, while they were behind the goal, it was just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, no, it was a real, real shame that afternoon. But yeah, it's got like an eerie, eerie feel to it. Um, a massive change, man. Just, just not much character behind it, to be honest. No, um, that's probably the best way to put it. I mean, we played there in sort of September time. It was a it was a difficult start to this season. Um, where we, yeah, obviously we'll, we'll come on to last season and we've got a great escape and we were coming into it on quite a high. We had a quite a difficult start to the season. There was a lot of changes and what have you. Um, but we actually seemed to be finishing it fairly strongly. We'd gone to Gillingham and won. We should have beaten Bolton. We had a goal disallowed. It was, it was called offside. I'm not sure it was offside. Um, how did you, so Scott, let's start with you. How did you find, or how did you feel the team were getting on January, February this year? I think the results um, speak for themselves. We, we picked up some, some massive results. I think obviously since the gaffer's taken over, um, we think we went three, un, three unbeaten at the start, didn't we? Uh, or three, one three in a row. Um, and that sort of set us on our way. Um, and the boys have been, the boys have been brilliant since then. And we picked up some, some really, really good results. Obviously, like you said, my way, which is which is obviously a nice one for me. I uh, got a little bit of stick for that one. Uh, I don't think I'll be going back there anytime soon. Um, but no, it was it's, it's it's been some some really good results we, that we've picked up, and and um, obviously we were looking forward to to, to finishing the season uh, strongly, uh, especially after the, a few results that we had uh, and the we, games that we were looking forward to as well with Tranmere at home. I think we have Rochdale away as well. We have to talk about Gillingham because we've been speaking to quite a lot of players over this lockdown and. Um, they all they all um, mention or we or not laugh, but they they mention you were really fired up for that Gillingham game. And um, were you getting a bit of were you getting a, a bit of banter from the players? Were you? Um, well, I said I, when I was there, I, I thought I'd done all right when I was there, and, and the fans were really good to me when I was there. And I just don't, I don't know what happened. I think I got a bit of a cheer at the beginning of the game, and then halfway through, they just started battering me. I thought, oh, I just hope we win this game. So I can start giving it back to them because it's it's one of them fans will give it to you and normally we're not allowed to give it back and we get a bit of stick for things like that and I think if you can take a bit of banter, give it back, give it out and 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 that's what I did at the end of the game and and they weren't too happy and I think one of their lads I think when they scored I don't know if you can see it on the thing um, one of their lads sort of sort of like gave me a little dig to the ribs when they scored and started giving me a bit and and nobody see that and then obviously once we scored I think Cal scored again I went running up to him and started celebrating in his face and, and I think sort of no one saw that what he did to me at the other end and I sort of got quite a bit of stick for that I know the boys started hammering on the coach on the way back so I think the Twitter just went off um, I haven't got Twitter which is probably a good no, I, thing I enjoyed it I enjoyed all it. sorts of abuse uh, yeah I think we all did to be fair um, I enjoyed the evening as well didn't we pal um, but it was, uh, it was it was it was good to, to get one over him because I thought I'd done okay when I was there uh, never sort of said a bad word about him and I just started getting abuse um, so it's, it's one of them things you just got to take it and I, I found it quite funny in the interview and it was just a bit of banter but I don't think they could take it as, as, as well as what we did Well see that season I'm just just curious I was going to do the start of the season it was obviously a very difficult start for us how did you find because pre-season of that league that season was, was a lot different to what we had before so we'd done the trip to Ireland we'd done the trip to Germany um, and I think we had a game against Bournemouth from memory um, yeah we had Bournemouth didn't we out in Spain um, how did you find pre season? It was a very different pre season, wasn't it? In terms of normally when you go into the start of the season, so we had a game against Palace, but we put a, a relatively young side out against that. How did you find did, did that affect you at all going into the start of the season? Um, to be honest, pre season was a bit all over the shop, but well, I'll let you two talk that one through, please. We just, <laughs> to be honest, we just got on with it. Um, yeah, we were, you know, we were all still, well, we were on such a wave from obviously the great escape that we just went, you know, everyone was buzzing and we all went with the flow. And um, yeah, for sort of one reason or another, when the season came around, we just, I don't know what it was, we just couldn't put any results together. It wasn't that we were playing badly, um, but uh, yeah, I just think so much, so much went for us in that run towards the end of the season that at the start of the following season, you know, things were bound to start going against us. After how well we, you know, we did and managed to get out of that situation. Um, yeah, no, that was a really, really tough start. Really tough start. So we got we got three points out of the first ten, I believe, wasn't it? And then yeah. um, Waddy, um, Waddy obviously was suspended at that time, and Glenn come in. 
How was it at that time? Did that news, I say that news must have come as a shock. Did it really unsettle the team in terms of, of that side? Was there much change when Glenn came in? Because that's a very difficult situation to come into. And obviously on yourself, Joe, you, that'd be your third manager, I believe, wouldn't it? In terms of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously. Everyone's sat. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but the trans transition for that was pretty easy, really, because obviously the gaffer was uh, working under Wally, and uh, it had always been really hands-on with the players, um, so everyone knew what he was about straight away, really. So the transition was really easy, and um, yeah, he just continued, you know, his hands-on approach uh, with all of us, especially with the young players as well, and um, yeah, we was starting to see the rewards from it, to be honest. But um, unfortunately, the season's come to a halt. So, but yeah, that's um, that's my views on it. Scott, how did you find it? Because I, I think one of the games that I remember, obviously, um, Glenn officially come in, I believe, after the Peterborough game was when he come in. No, it was officially, actually. That was when he started doing his caretaker. Uh, and we lost 3 to at Peterborough. But we had the home game against Rochdale, uh, where it went 3 0 up um, in the first half. Rochdale really did put us under some real pressure. I think they scored late on with Henderson and then had some chance late on the draw. Um, do you think that was a really big test for the team in terms of holding on because that was obviously our first win of the season but also having a 3 nil lead if we had lost that do you think that could have really damaged the, the spirit of the guys? Yeah definitely I think especially going 3 nil up at home I think it was like 25 minutes or something like that we went 3 nil up and we were playing some really really good stuff um, and, and then obviously second half because I think I think sort of Doubt sort of crept, crept in a little bit when we went to 3-2 because we've, we were on that run where we hadn't won a game and I think we were so close to it and I think they must have hit the bar and like had a shot that was right in front of the line and they missed it you know, right near the end and it sort of everything just sort of went for us at the end of that game. Um, but I felt like, yeah, I think that was, that was sort of the, the sort of catalyst to sort of kick us on um, and, and we managed to obviously hold that. I think there was a few twitchy fun moments um, but we, we felt like we played well enough to to win the game in the end and I thought I think that was the sort of um, thing that set us off on, on on the run because I think we had Southend again uh, away the week after and, and we thought we, we had a look at the fix and we thought to ourselves we can sort of get a couple of wins in a row then we're sort of back up there and, and we can we can push up the table and then we managed to go and beat Portsmouth as well at home in the last minute which was a, a brilliant result and, and then that sort of sort of kick starts you then and and the boys sort of went from from got, got got our confidence from that and went from strength to strength after that really. Because we did we did have some difficult closing games out, didn't we? That was the sort of struggle we had. Um, I, I remember Bristol, you know, Bristol Rovers away where we had a really great second half. I think Joe and I spoke about it last time. We did. I remember South End at home where we we were leading, weren't we? And then we let we laid gold in as well in terms of penalty and stuff like that. So that was that was that a bit of a problem just trying to close games out last you know say last season. This season, yeah, but that leads back to you know the the age of our average age of our squad. Um, you know, we've got such a immature is not the right word, such a young squad that yeah, closing, closing games out this is something that you you know you just experience really, and that's that's exactly what we lack. And um, obviously, you've got some great influences in the training room, like Scott and the rest of the boys, Woody, Lukey, Callum. Quezzy, um, all very experienced, but um, yeah, I mean, the back four is very, very young, so that was that was just, just the key, really, as, we do, as long as the season went on. That we, yeah, and I think that's yeah. I think that's one of the reasons as well. I think that's sorry, pigs. I think that's one of the reasons as well. The gaffer sort of went to a five at the back. Because I think sort of there was probably situations in games where we weren't sort of closing it down, and obviously he put me at, at right wing back as well because we were so young. Obviously, as one of the the older players, I sort of probably have to help out the younger lads um, a bit more um, and sort of shout a bit more. I don't know if you see from the side, I probably shout a bit too much. I get told off for it by by me. Love, love it, Cat Too much of the rest and things like that. Right, his but, nickname's, his nickname's <laughs> Cat Poo, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I think at the back we didn't we didn't really have too much experience did we pigs and I think that's why we, we sort of tried to I probably moved into that sort of position just to to give him a bit of a voice because obviously we had Will who was even though he's obviously our captain he's, he's still very young um, and he's still very un, uh, inexperienced isn't he and he hasn't had as many games as he probably would have liked with injuries and that yeah. but when he's fully fit he's a he's a great asset for us so hopefully he'll be back very soon as well Will yeah and I, and I think Joe you're spot on with that in terms of it is a very inexperienced team I, I think I've discussed it before in terms of 
normally you know, these players might be going out and getting loans and, and getting that sort of experience that they desperately need. And League One's a, a very hard level to come into on yeah. that side of it. Um, you, just got to, you just got to look at you know some of the players that have been you know that have come through like Paul Colombi. Like the level he's been on loan at before was like it's seven. It's like seven leagues lower than League One. Yeah. You know, it's, that's a, it's a massively tough learning curve, and uh, yeah, to be fair to them, they've all done really, they've all done really well with it. But we've just got to keep going, get as many games under the belt as possible, and uh, that's the only way to get experience, I guess. Do you yeah, think that exactly. was? The, do you think that was starting to come into it, end? Because obviously, as we got past sort of January, we did start closing some games out. Um, so, do you think it's a very hard way to learn? You know, going straight into the deep end and stuff like that. But do you, do you think gradually, you know, once as a result started coming? The experience they, they learned very very quickly didn't they we've got a lot of young players especially Jack Rodoni coming into the midfield as well yeah I definitely think so yeah but it obviously yeah, takes, yeah, quite, exactly. takes time and uh, you know we've spoken about quite a lot as well wasn't it Scott uh, yeah, yeah the, I think it was at the time obviously the beginning of the season wasn't it I think yeah. because we were kept conceding last minute I think it seemed like every game we just kept conceding in the last minute I can remember the Coventry game We I think we played really, we played really well that game and, and we managed we could, I think we conceded what was it late? Like it was literally the last kick of the match, wasn't it? Yeah. And I think you could look around the dressing room and and you sort of see there's so many young lads around, and we just we just looked deflated, didn't we? After that game, I think. Um, yeah. and I felt after that sort of we, we sort of kicked on. Um, and yeah, it's we, we we've got some good young lads here. That's the thing. We have got some really good young lads. <laughs> and um, like you said, that what Pig said, they have been chucked in sort of at the deep end. They haven't really gone out alone, and because probably our squad isn't as big as a lot of the other League One one clubs and we've sort of had to put them in and I felt they've, they have done really well but they're, they're obviously, they're going to have to learn the hard way and they're going to make mistakes and, and we've obviously made, we made quite a lot at the beginning of the season but like you said, I think we've started to learn and how to manage games a lot better, seeing games out and, and knowing what to do in certain situations and it, and it has definitely helped us. And it's interesting you were saying there because obviously we, we can see the late goals against commentary, uh, also it's switch away obviously midweek um, and a Bolton and that sort of side of it. it it's interesting that you're saying obviously players deflated and young players. Does that put a lot of that put a lot of responsibility on you guys and the senior pros? Because obviously I can imagine you got it, you haven't won the game, you can see the goal, you've gone, you know, late, you've talked. But I suppose it's it's up to you players really to try and lift it up. Would that be right in saying, trying to keep it positive? Yeah. Well, I think I think yeah. after the well, oh, sorry, Fix. I think after the Bolton game, I was probably one of the worst ones. <laughs> after the Bolton game, I think I was. I do get quite emotional. Pigs is exactly the same. Um, we both we both get quite emotional after the game, and, and we sort of say our bits. And um, I think we've actually learned to sort of. I think you do have to come around some lads after games, and I think after the heat of the moment, sort of being after straight after the game. You'll be in the showers or whatever, and you just be chatting to the lads and saying, "Oh, do you know I mean, don't worry. Next time we'll, we'll do this, we'll do that better." And and you do have to sort of learn. Um, and I felt felt like we have done that um, for recent times, anyway. Yeah, that was horrible. That one though, that still pisses me off thinking about it now. Um, what Bolton? Yeah, it's so hard, so, so hard after something like that because you're so wound up inside the change room. You know, you need to say something constructive and not just be angry, and you just. You know, it's a really, it's a really, you know, horrible situation to be in, and you can see it late like it's that. It's hard because it's, yeah. it's nothing. It like, isn't anything personal, is it? You just, no, it's everyone not. just so emotional after the games, and and we just get caught up in it. I, as I said, I'm probably one of the worst for it. I know, I know how emotional I get after games and during games and everything else. Um, but I felt, I feel like we, have, we sort of sometimes we do need that because you don't want to sort of go in the dressing room, everyone really quiet and no one saying anything. Um, I feel like you need to sort of get boys a little bit sort of angry, do you know what I mean? Because I think yeah. the more it happened at the beginning of the season, no one was really saying anything. And I felt like we needed to sort of have have something about us a little bit, like be a bit more disappointed after yeah. the game, do you know what I mean? But so we, yeah, we, started, like we, we started to we get sort a bit of more that into, into the changing room a lot more. In, in terms of, obviously, the Bolton one, I think, obviously, looking from the outside in as fans, um, you could tell that we were getting really, really deep and obviously on top of that goalkeeper. And then that just invites Bolton to not long ball after long ball. Um, Kicks, as a forward, how difficult is that? Are you, are you trying to get, do you have to drop in or do you try and stay up to try and give you an option? It's difficult, isn't it? Because I'm, I'm sure up front you can see what's happening, but yeah. naturally, when you're, naturally when you're tired and you're up against it, your natural reaction is to drop and just protect your yeah. box. You know, that sort of side. 
Yeah, it's tough. I mean, then you know, we're going back to the same thing we spoke about earlier. You know, this experience at the end of the day, people yeah. um, in the back four, they've learned, and they've definitely learned from that experience. Although it cost us two points at the end of the day, it might have gained us a few points further down the line. But um, yeah, that's that's just the learning curve. And as a striker, when you, you know, when there's massive gaps between you and the midfield, and you just you basically you know, chasing shadows, I mean, quite literally. Um, yeah, it can be very frustrating. It's hard to sort of communicate from where you are on the pitch to the defenders to get them up. Um, it's really got to be, you know, a conversation and communication between the goalkeeper and, uh, and the back five. You mentioned there, well, there's a couple of things, actually. You talk about experience of the, the squad and also about some of the teams you played. I'll start with some of the teams you played there. You've mentioned um, Bolton we were talking about. Obviously, they've, they've struggled this season down at the bottom end. Um, Coventry, they're looking as it goes to be going up as champions. Would you say they are the best team we've played this season? Um, oh, well, they played very good. They did play very, very good football um, when we played them. But, um, then, yeah, but we should, should have got something from the game again. Similar for Rotherham, I guess. Uh, Rotherham, Rotherham pretty good. I mean, obviously, we was it 1-1 one, one at home and then second half, they just blitzed us, basically. Um, but yeah, they were very, you know, strong and direct. Yeah, then we got an amazing result up, up at their place. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, um, an amazing goal from Max Sanders on that occasion. Yeah. What, did you make of, what have you made of Max? And another player, we talk about young players. Max has come in. Uh, Marcus Force was with us for a long spell of time. Those two, I mean, how do you... How, well... How do you judge their uh, progress with us? Um, they're here, yeah, obviously, to improve themselves, but what they're giving to the team? Yeah, I think I know me and Pigs think so uh, really highly of, of Max. He's, um, I think, when he first came in, I think I was playing in the midfield, and and I was trying to get close to him, and I couldn't get anywhere near him. So I was just trying to kick him. <laughs> I, was like, I was just trying to get near him and kick him because I couldn't get near him. I thought this this kid's good. Like he's very good. Like technically, he was unbelievable, and he just the way he sort of glides past players. Um, he's he's really really has improved us, um, and obviously force force come in. Pigs would obviously know more about force than because he's had to play with him. But his goals were were brilliant for us, and probably probably have kept us up as well. I don't know if Pigs would agree, but they probably kept us up. Um, the goals that he scored in big games, um, and they're, and they're both class class players and. And like you said, they've they've really helped us at the Lonies as well. And obviously, I think Trots as well. I thought Trots uh, Trots has been brilliant for us at the beginning of the season. Um, kept us in a lot of the games. Um, and he's he's still a young lad. He's still learning. And I think he's got a really good future ahead of him as well. And Mads as well came in late on loan from Brentford. These are players. I don't know what's the situation. Are they Trots gone back? Are they all called, been recalled? Do you know what they're going to be like if we if we go back into training? Will they be there? Mm-hmm. You, you know as much as us, chaps, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you'll probably know more than us. Yeah, I haven't got a clue. George? I, thought, I, I know other clubs have recalled Lonely, but I don't know what the status of our guys is. Okay. Well, I'm guessing it's done. You know, the, yeah. the, yeah. the, loan, the, loan, the loan deals obviously expire after, after the, season, the season finish date. Yeah. So. so, we'll just quickly wrap up the sort of the end of the season. Uh, the Rotherham game, obviously, with uh, Max Arnold scoring that goal. How surprised were you? Got how, how surprised were you? We got that penalty last minute with a pull in a box away at a, a club that's obviously running, you know, doing really well. Um, how do you, was that a bit of a surprise that you got that one? And then who who, who wanted to take it? Was Quezzy? No, it wasn't, wasn't a surprise. I was about to nod it in. The geezer <laughs> pulled me back. You don't get it. You, you, you would have definitely you would have missed that one, mate. I was about to score <laughs> from two yards. Um, yeah, I had a good chance. I had a good chance like 15 minutes before, and the keeper made an unbelievable save. I think I almost broke his wrist. As he went down, I was like, I was like, hit it, and he like literally cannoned off his wrist. I thought he'd broken it. I was absolutely gutted. And then, uh, yeah, as soon as the ball came in the box, I thought oh, I'm getting this. The geezer pulled me back. And then it was Stone Waller. And then, uh, yeah, God, I've, I've had an absolute nightmare with penalties. <laughs> I want, I, I'm glad I, you said that. I I'll be honest, I, I, want, I wanted to take it. Like, at the start of the season, those penalties did actually make, you know, did take my confidence, to be honest, um, because I was so free scoring until the end of last season. But, um, yeah, no, I, I really wanted to take it. I just didn't feel comfortable, and I thought it would be better for the team if someone took it who was uh, 
he was feeling comfortable. And uh, yeah, Quez put it like that. Great pen as well. Yeah. We um we have had a bit of a problem with penalties in Milton Keynes. Lyle Taylor a couple of seasons ago didn't happen for him. Obviously yourself this season. We we just won't mention it. We just won't talk about it. We'll we'll squeeze on. Yeah, yeah keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're talking about uh, Marcus Force there with goals he kept us up, and then Stu's mentioned last season uh, the great escape, and then Joe your goals were pivotal then in keeping us up. Two goals against Wickham, penultimate last home game of the season, complete the great escape. Important goals all through. At, Rochdale and Luton and all sorts of places. Uh, well, let's just stop there for a second. Kenilworth Road, got to be the greatest stadium we've ever played at. Have I got that right? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a great, that was a great game, wasn't it? A great game. That uh, was a good night. Even I popped my calf, it was a great night. Running down the line with one calf. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a joke, wasn't it? That, that great result. Yeah, that was, it, was, uh, it was like a party after in the dressing room, and even though. No, we that knew we had to Rambo, get a result. Yeah. A couple of us, it was literally, <laughs> yeah, the rap show, wasn't it? I was going to say, we've obviously spoken a lot about um, this great escape in terms of, you know, Bradford and what we did late on. Um, but we also, that season, had a really good FA Cup run as well. Um, that we sort of gets lost a little bit within there. Of course, I was, um, wait, I was waiting for this one. Well, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to make sure, Scott, that we, you know, gave you that sort of side. But what a mad, what a mad um, FA Cup run. Harringay away, under the cameras... How do you obviously that was when that was the last game under Neil Harvey and we interviewed Neil um, a couple of weeks ago uh, and he said you know he was open and said that he decided um, that that was his last game but he didn't want us to to lose at Harrow game once he was in a really good position I suppose question wise did did you did you he was honest with us and said like I say he was going to leave he was going to leave did you sense that with him and secondly them games are, are hiding into nothing aren't they non league. Um, I mean, we you know we got through in the end. Yeah, no, it was a real shame to be honest. Um, because Ars obviously cared about you know everyone a lot at the club, and you know everyone wanted him to do well. But um, yeah, it was a really tough time. You could see that pressure was affecting him, and uh, you know he'd obviously done some really good things for the club, um, done amazingly well to get into League One. And uh, yeah, for whatever reason that season, you know just. Whatever we tried just didn't work. I mean, it wasn't that I can remember the start. We played some really, really good football at the start of the season, but we just couldn't get results. We couldn't. I mean, I remember one game. Uh, I think it was at home to Coventry, actually. It was you, it was you Scott, was it? The penalty? Yeah, the, the foul at the end. Yeah, definite pen. Yeah. Yeah, and just, just things like that. I mean, and then making the silly mistakes that was costing us massively. Nothing, uh, nothing went for us. I'm afraid at the time. But, yeah, I know. I feel felt really sorry for us because you know, you know, decent guy, and um, yeah, it's just good to see him doing well now. Though. What was that game like to play in though? The um, the Harringay game. Obviously, um, Pinnock scored the late goal, thankfully, um, to get us out of that trouble. No one wanted to replay that, did they? Um, what was yeah. it like? What was it Horrible. like? Because you're not hiding to nothing, guys. You know, you're, yeah. the cameras yeah. are there because they know it's going to be an upset. We were bottom of the league or, or that side of it. We had no confidence. I mean, no. <laughs> we were expected, expected to win. To win easy, wasn't it? Cameras are there. And, and on Astro as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, it was tough. But, yeah, it was, you know, thankfully, we got through it. So, a lucky goal as That's well. <laughs> yeah, it was, not it? But that's the yeah, thing. We, well, I've, had, I've had that, many. I've had, yeah, OG all day. I've had, <laughs> that's the thing. I've had so, so many of them games. Like I, had, I think we had Halifax the round after as well. And I had Halifax like, about four or five years ago. And we only just managed to beat them. And then we had, um, I think it was Northwich Victoria when I was at Cholton. And we got beat by them. And that was on telly. And they, they are like proper banana skins. And that was another one, especially with the Astro Turf as well. And obviously the run we were on. Um, we, like you said, we was on a hide into nothing, um, and we managed to nick, nick the win at the end, and, and sort of had a, had a decent run in the end, which was which was obviously nice for the club. Well, the cameras seemed to follow us around, didn't they? Because they, they 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 thought that if they didn't get to Harringay, they'd get us to Halifax. Um, but in yeah. the end, we in the end we dealt out quite well, and in the end, Joe, you scored the third goal in that. But we scored some decent goals that game, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Um, we gained a little bit of momentum from that game, actually, to be honest, and uh, yeah, that really helped. That? that was Bass and Reedy, wasn't it? Yeah. No, we worked, really looked like working under, I think everyone did, um, I'm working under those two for um, the time that we had them. They were both first class, to be honest. I was going to say, we went into a third, obviously a third round, 
Fleetwood away. Um, we'd already been, you know, obviously Fleetwood in our league. And that was the introduction of Aaron Ramsdale. First game. Um, we spoke We spoke to him uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. And he, 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 he said he didn't know anyone's names. He had to look through the programme of, of names and stuff like that. But how quickly... I think as fans, we very quickly saw that we had a, a goalkeeper that was a different level. How quickly did you guys notice that? And Scott, how, did, how quickly did you notice it? We, I think we knew straight away because in training, you could just tell. I think you can tell from a couple of training sessions how good someone's going to be, I think. And um, some of the, the shot stopping he was doing was ridiculous. That boy would have saved all the pigs his shots in training. He, he had no confidence during the games, bless him. But he was... He <laughs> I was, was injured when he was, first time. <laughs> yeah, there he is. I was, and I, I actually, I actually, um, I roomed with him, so I, I got to know him quite well. And he's a really, really good lad. Um, he's, he, and look, it's scary well, how young he is as well, and how well he's doing. What? I didn't say that about you. It said you're boring. Yeah, well, he makes a good cup of tea anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think we could all tell how good Rambo was going to be for us, and then, but I don't think you knew how how well he was going to do. As in the game, his performances, like he pulled out some absolute world. He saved. I think the one that stands out for me was the Oxford away. I don't know how we didn't concede in that game. It was ridiculous. I think yeah. it was just an onslaught, and we managed to get a nil-nil. And I think some of his saves were unbelievable with that game. It was um, like it was like we did the Matrix that game, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? I don't think we touched the ball game either. Yeah, I don't think I did either. It must it must give the team immense confidence to know that you've got a goalkeeper like that who, let's be fair, it's gonna be a got to be a worldy or, or a worldly goal, you know, to, to beat him. Um he's also, you know, from around the club, he's always um, after games, always around the back the back bar and stuff like that. Really, really immense to, really got himself amongst the team, didn't he, and the fans. Do you think that really helped his character also helped him through that as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as much as a top player he is, he's a great character and uh yeah, he's brilliant to have around at any point. Um, yeah, no, I think. Yeah, I think really, especially really like genuine especially someone, sorry, cool. especially someone coming in from from a Premier League club. I think uh, sometimes they don't really want to know the lads, and I think that sort of rubs a few lads up the wrong way. Um, and I think when a, a lad comes in, young lads, and gets in and grafts and gets to know the boys, enjoys the banner, has a bit of a banner with the boys and things like that. I think it just, it just, you just sort of gel straight away, do you know what I mean? So I think that sort of helped him coming in as a young lad. He just got straight stuck in uh, and the boys obviously appreciated that and, and obviously the rest is history now with him. And as Stu says, he made his debut at Fleetwood in the FA Cup and there's a bit of a random situation in which we'd gone through in the FA Cup, three rounds, three different managers and then we get into the, to the West Ham game. What did... <laughs> Did you think when you got the third goal straight after half time, did you think that was game over? Uh, that's a tough one. I don't know. I think you sort of you want to think you're 3 it up. It's, it's game over. But then I just think the season we were having, and I don't think we won for ages before that. One. And I think to be fair, I was injured actually. I, that was my first game back in uh, for yeah, about for four or five weeks. Yeah, and I, I wasn't even expecting to play. What West Ham, mate? Um, hey. <laughs> um, I wasn't even expecting to play, so so when I obviously got the call up to play, I was I was a bit shocked. But uh, yeah, when the third goal went in, it was just, I don't know, it just it was a it's just a weird feeling. I think we all just sort of had to try and pinch ourselves and yeah. thinking, oh, we can actually win this now. I think when you go two and like you sort of you're expecting them to have a bit of reaction, and then it might have sort of I think it killed them off a little bit. The third goal, we obviously, did get a couple of goals back, but. It was uh, they, they obviously had to get the third to, to win the, to, to get it to a draw, um, and I think we knew that we we could hold them out, and, and we managed to do so in the end, which was which was obviously great for the club and I say probably for me, nights of the world, well, probably the best game I've ever played and the best sort of night I've been involved in. I was going to say, what was going through your head when you went through for the second goal? I mean, you showed amazing composure. With the finish, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, don't, I just think you know, I don't know, know, I don't know where Adrian was diving. Hey, that was... <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I've done it with the eyes. I've done it with the eyes, mate. <laughs> I've done it with the eyes, mate. Um, it's, they're, they're probably the hardest ones. Uh, yeah. Where you're running through and you've got time to think. Bigs will, Bigs will probably say the same. When you're running through and you've got a bit of time to think about, it, they're the toughest ones sometimes. And 
I just thought, I knew I was always going to go. Only get like three, you only get like three of them a season, so you better enjoy it. Well, yeah. That, all mate, that space when you're running through and then you bloody do yourself. Well, I had to show, I had the pace that I showed that, that day was nah. ridiculous. Like, I'm sat there and I'll in war, wasn't it? Bob Bonner and that, they didn't even see you, mate. Aye, they mate, they didn't know what was going on, did they? So I just nah. went straight through. But yeah, it was, it, it, I didn't really think, well, I did, I obviously. Think, Actually, I think, it's one of I think they, were re- they were reading part of the book on top of the uh, John, what's his name, Stan? <laughs> <laughs> Robert John Green. <sighs> to be fair, we, me and Nick were standing together in the in the Kempo end, and, and when you went through, it was one of those, because you think you're playing against a premiership team, you came through, and I'm thinking, they're going to catch you up. And you just seem to, yeah. I don't know where you got, that pace you got was just, I don't know where you got it from, you know, that sort of, but, it was a great finish. Even Dwight's I've still got mileage in the legs yet. I'm all right. I'm still going. I'm still going. Any more mileage in that beard? <laughs> all right, there will be, mate. If this lockdown carries on. <laughs> well, we do have to ask about the beard because, of course, that was that was the bet. And um, tell me if I'm wrong here, but did you regret that as soon as you after the game you were reminded you made that bet on what was it? It was BBC, wasn't it? Um, that you'd yeah. Did you, you regret it? Did you regret it? You know what? I wasn't. Uh, well, I think Barchi was meant to be doing the interview. So Barchi was meant to be doing the interview, and I wasn't meant to be doing because I was injured. So I wasn't expected to play. I think Barchi was probably going to be playing. Um, right. And he got injured. Um, and then they said, oh, who, who can do it? And they said for me to do it. So I, was, I, I wasn't expecting I wasn't playing anything else. So I wasn't thinking anything of it. Called me over and said, yeah, I, I probably didn't even listen to what he was saying, to be honest with you. And I said, yeah, 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 all right, I'll do it. And then I, I just, I forgot after the game, I didn't even realise, but I was on such a high, I just, I just thought, well, I'll just go with it. Um, and then obviously I, I did, I, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't actually regret, I don't regret any of it because it was, it was great publicity for the club. Um, and uh, it's, it's one of them things where it's, it's obviously going to be remembered for, for that as well, and and it, it was it put the sort of uh, back on the map as well, which was which was great. From me- from memory, I believe Billy Jones was part of the um, BT Sports that night. I believe. Yeah. Um, did he show? Did you did you guys get a chance to meet him, or you met him before? Because he doesn't go down at Kingsbury too much. Did he show his face at all? No, we didn't get to see him, did we, Pigs? He didn't. I don't think no. coming. I know he's he's good mates with with Wally, um, but no, he did. He didn't. He didn't come in. I thought he might have come and seen the lads, um, but no, we didn't. We didn't see. I only knew he was in the, the stadium until uh, after the game, when obviously we just watched the highlights about a thousand times afterwards. Um, but he, he, yeah, we didn't. We didn't. Even, I didn't even know he was in the stadium. To be honest with you. So I think we we all know obviously the um, yeah, the last game of the season, Bradford City, uh, and obviously what happened there. Um, but I think the, probably one of the key things probably was a week before that when we beat Wickham Wanderers two one at home. Uh, I'm thinking you got both the goals that day. Um, not to mention another penalty. Um, on that side of it, <laughs> um, with that, so, I, I did watch it today actually, and Keeper made a great save on that one. Yeah, he did. Uh, well, well saved. Well done. No, no, it was. I, I think sometimes you just got, to, you know, and, and even a follow up didn't go away that day. And um, what I did notice though, and I'm, I, I don't know, maybe I'm senseless, but you got above Akin Fenwell for that first goal. Yeah. yeah. I did, yeah. did you yeah. tie him down at all, or did he not jump? No, nah, just use, use nah, his, his mohawk. Uh, I used his strength and just leaned on his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Stuck there for a couple of more seconds and it yeah. <laughs> Nodded in. MJ, hang time. <laughs> yeah. But they were massive they were massive and also, and also they were massive goals because on that weekend Accrington beat Plymouth five one. Um yeah. which totally destroyed their goal difference and put us in a situation where we could go to Bradford to get a draw and be you know, being out being our destiny. Um, the second goal is just the funniest goal against Wickham at all. Yeah, I know. What do you remember that? Because it's like, did you touch it? It's just a keep. I'm not saying it was an easy goal, never. I think think it hit me in the chest. Um, Like a loopy ball in and the keeper, I don't know what he was doing. Yeah, Um, we still don't know what he's doing, do we? Yeah, it didn't even go go past him very fast. It was so weird, wasn't it? I know. (laughs) Looked like it looked like it was on puppet strings, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously saving themselves for this season probably on that side. Look like, like a power pod. Like David Seaman power yeah. pod. <laughs> <laughs> also we talk about Bradford. Um the celebrations after Bradford, were they one of the best ones you've had? 
a lot of relief, I'd imagine, in that. Yeah, it's a horrible game. Oh, God, horrible. But, yeah, it was, um, yeah, lovely, lovely scenes after that game. Very enjoyable. Oh, it was, wasn't it? I can mm. remember because I actually went, I was injured, so I went up and watched the game. So I went to go see my grandparents because uh, they live up in Leeds. And uh, I, I was, I don't know how you guys do it every week and watch us play. Like, I was so nervous. It, yeah, was, te- it was horrible. Of course you It was so bad. No. Game. Yeah, but even the Wickham one, the Wickham was exactly the same. I don't know how, I don't know how you do it. Like, it, was, it was terrible. It was terrible to watch. Um, but I felt we'd done all right, actually. I felt we coped with it pretty well in the game uh, we probably should have scored shouldn't we Hans had a couple of chances you might have had another one yeah I hit the post um, but yeah the, the, well we obviously I didn't come back on the coach but I know you boys did I know you had a good time um, but then we all met up the next day and, and done a little something afterwards which was which was nice and all the boys turned up which was good I think I think the, wor- the worst not the worst part about our season and, and Nick and George before you join in but Nick and I on the week podcast we were get, we, you try and get you try not to get into a situation where you get too hopeful so when you're 10 points behind, you, football fans naturally just not resign themselves, but you just go, do you know what? We, we've got to do an end of a lot here. But sometimes the hope that kills yeah. you. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember saying to Nick, the Wiccan game, I think I was the most nervous because what you don't want to do is you don't, you don't want a team to do so well and then miss out so late because it becomes even worse, like that sort of relegation. I know we spoke to you before, Joe, about that, haven't we, in terms of you were okay with that. Um, but um, Scott, how were you? Obviously, I know you were injured a little bit at that start, but was it a case you just wanted to make sure you finished off or make sure the boys finished off the hard work you put in over that last part of the season? Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, I think we we all, well, I don't know if other lads, but to be honest, I thought this, this could be us, like that, that's us done, we're that far behind. Let's just go out there and try and nick a few results. And I think the pressure was off us, like you said, the pressure was off us. And we just, we started just picking up with result and result and result. And then, like you said, I think because you've done that well, they sort of put a lot more pressure on yourselves. Um, and the boys were brilliant to sort of handle that pressure, especially the the Bradford game when you know there's obviously results going your way and you, you've got to hold that for that draw. Um, but I thought the boys showed great character. Um, and it was, it was a good it was a good squad we had uh, at the end of last season um, we had a lot more experience as well didn't we Pigs I'd say yeah. in, in, in and around the squad uh, we still had a lot of young lads but we did have a lot more experience and, and we managed to sort of hold out uh, when Wally come in uh, we managed to hold out in a lot of the games and pick up some really really valuable points and I think I was looking back at the league, league I was looking back at certain points of the season and to give you a perspective of how well the team done at, at the beginning of February Scunthorpe were 13th with 40 points and ended up getting relegated with 46 points. Um, so I think when you look at this, I think, ridiculous. yeah, I, I remember Scum, but we, me and Nick always say that there's always a team that drops, always a team that sort of, and I, I felt this season Crystal Rose, uh, Crystal Rose might have been that team who went on a really, you know, crazy, crazy drop of the season. Yeah. Um, but I think it shows, I think it shows the testament to the, to the team as well that actually the pressure was on Scumfall us keep winning and keep doing that and yeah made them crack and, uh, and Plymouth obviously went to pop you know the, the game before that so I think the team put a lot of pressure on on that side of it um, how do you think sort of wrapping up now how do you think you're going to get on how do you think the season was going in terms of were you confident with the games coming up because we were due we were due to go to Rochdale as you say due to play Tranmere were you, were you reasonably confident that we were going to stay up uh, yeah I was confident um, I mean part like a tiny part of me does think oh not this again like for me, it's like the third season in a row, basically. Um, <laughs> I mean, it does. I mean, as fans, obviously, you know, it's really tough to watch all the um, the really tense games. But as players, <laughs> it takes a lot, of, a lot out of your emotion there as well. So part of me did think, oh no, not this again. But yeah, no, I was really confident finishing this season strongly uh, as a team and personally as well. Yeah, me as well. I, f- I felt like we had enough. Enough experience. Well, it, well, we had Woody coming back as well. Woody was starting to get himself fit, and I felt like we had a lot more options um, coming into our team as well. Um, so I, I think we we felt confident, especially with the result at Gillingham as well. And then we probably should, we should have won it, but against Bolton, and and that would have sort of taken us a few points ahead. And we knew that it was in our hands as well. We obviously Tramy at home, um, even though it would have been a tough game, we'd still fancy ourselves to to get the result. Um, so it was all in our hands, and I, 
I felt I think we all felt pretty confident. We were all in good spirits as well, looking forward to the next games and and obviously getting the, getting the job done as soon as we could. And I have to, I have to ask one question before Nick sort of finishes off, um, Scott. Um, you're one of my favourite players, and I'm not saying that because you're on the show. Uh, on the, on the <laughs> Cheers, appreciate just, that. Thank you. Just for the fact that you love winding people up on the pitch. Um, <laughs> oh, sure, don't. Don't, I, have to, I have to tell him. I have to tell him. I said, yeah. chill out. Just chill out. We're here for the, the points, not to, uh, not to wind, not to wind these kickers up. For goodness' sake. But that's, you do that's love, the you thing. You do love like, a tackle. You, you do have a tackle, and you do love a bit of a wind up to them, do you? Yeah, I think you've got. I think you've got to have that in in your locker. I think I, <laughs> uh, probably when I was young. Probably when I was younger, I wasn't. When I was younger, I wasn't really like that. I don't think, but I think the more I've, I've learned, I try to try to enjoy it as well. I don't know if you see if I'm enjoying it or not out there, but I do. I do enjoy it. I do quite like having a bit with with other players, and it sort of gets me going again as well. Especially if we're not we're not playing so well and, and, and things like that. And yeah, it sort of just just gets my get myself going, and and, and I like I just like having a bit of banter with the boys because like I said I'm 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 not getting any younger now, um, but I've still got a few years left in me. I promise you. But um, I think the, the the more you sort of come into the end of your career, you sort of try to enjoy it a lot more and, and, and appreciate what you've got and, and what you've had. So that's that's probably one of the reasons I'm, I'm sort of like that as well. Um, I definitely think we needed it, to be honest with you. In previous years, we, we might have been a little bit too nice, shall we say. So that always goes a long way. All these little small margins that can get you with places anyway. Um, I think I want to pick up on Joe earlier, um, and this is to the listeners, you might have heard us having a little bit of a chuckle. Joe was holding up a photo of. It was. Can you just describe to the listeners what that photo was, and dare I ask, who was behind creating it? Um, I have to have what a is it, Pigs? Who created it? But it's just the. Uh, it's funny <laughs> because I'm in a WhatsApp group with. Uh, because Scott only lives just down the road from me. I'm in a WhatsApp group with a few of his friends as well, and uh, it just keeps getting resurfaced. A few couple of. What is it, the cafe? Yeah, it's basically uh, it's the <laughs> it's the legendary photo of um, Cafu lifting. I think it's the two thousand and two World yeah. Cup. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> and uh, someone's edited Scott Scott's face <laughs> on his face. Yeah, it was just a little joke we all had because when the gaffer asked him to play right back, everyone's like Cafu, and uh, yeah. <laughs> some reason everyone's found it really funny. <laughs> um, Cafu is, is a legend. He is a legendary player. Yeah. Another legend, you just t- you, you dropped his name in there very quickly, uh, Michael Jordan, a little bit earlier. Have you been watching the uh, the Netflix show on him and what have you made of it, if you have been? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, I love it. Yeah, we, I, think, we, yeah, I think we've both been watching him. We, we were saying about it earlier. Um, but it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. So it's, I, you knew he was a good player, but I don't think you realised how good he was. Yeah. And I was just explaining to the missus this morning. So I think Rob was on um, Good Morning Britain. So that's, that's our life at the minute, watching Good Morning Britain. <laughs> um, I think Rob was on there and he was saying, I was just saying to her, just, you should watch it. Like, you're, I think you'd love it. Because it is just so, it is quite inspirational, really, I think. Yeah, it's I think just it's a mindset. The, same, but it's, the, whole, the whole mindset. Yeah. It's just incredible. And I love all the trash, I love all the trash, trash talking as well. <laughs> like, not only you, that. Yeah, you're good. the worst at trash talking, you are. No. <laughs> You're the worst at trash talking. He's terrible. <laughs> well, I was going to ask who would be in the current Wimbledon squad. Who would be the Michael Jordan of the Wimbledon team? Who would be the Scotty Pippin? And who would be the Dennis Rodman? Um, uh, Rodman's probably Mitch Pinnock. Quite <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a good comparison. Yes. Uh, Close with Woody. Close with Woody. Yeah. So the, so the uh, Rodman. Um, who'd be like him, Joe? Uh, I think MJ. That's a, that's a tough one. The MJ. That's a tough one. That is a yeah, tough wha- one. Scott, I'll, wha- wha- I'll, wha- 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 I'll give you. A, I'll give you a pigs. <laughs> uh, you're, you're both too nice. Give it to each other. <laughs> oh, no, I'll give. I'll, I'll give. Uh-huh. It, I'll even give. Yeah, I'll give pigs. Oh, pigs I don't want to give it to anyone else. Fair enough. <laughs> you take it, Joe. It's all yours. Look at your name around the club. <laughs> um, yeah, and then take that. Last one as well, Scott. Um, you mentioned a rooming with Aaron Ramsdale. You say he made a nice cup of tea. You yourself, when you make a cup of tea, as it is your 
first appearance on the podcast, we do have to ask you, when you make a cup of tea yourself, do you put the milk in the mug first or do you put the bag in the mug first? If I was to have a cup of tea, I'm putting in the tea bag first and then the milk and then the sugar. 100% correct. Absolutely. That's well, how it should be. That's how it should be. Do you know what? My wife made me a cup of biscuit in. Do you know what? My wife made a cup of tea this morning and she put a bag in. I was actually looking what she was doing and then she put a bag in and she put the sugar in on top of it and I was just like, you can't do that. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah straight that. The tea bag takes the sugar then. Yeah. No sugar. Yeah, I've got, I've got yeah, in lockdown, so I do want to set up. Guys, you won't believe this, yeah, but true, I've, I've, I've actually ordered some of Scott's, uh, Scott and his partner's favourite drinks. Him and his uh, missus love iron brew. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he has. Yeah, he's yeah, like missus. a few bottles. Yeah, she's probably, she's probably got a few bottles down, now. mate. Yeah, so I've, oh God, I've got him two crates of iron brew to drop around to him later. You know what? I've only had it since lockdown. Because I can't, we can't really go, we haven't really been going out because of the situation with the little one and, and the missus, because they're one of the the vulnerable um, um, bracket. So Pigs has been doing a, a few of my shops for me. So he's been a, he's been a good Samaritan, haven't you, mate? Been looking after us. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, every day. Have you got a bit of Scottish in you then? Because I, 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 I go to Scotland quite a lot for, for business. And if you go to Edinburgh Airport, first thing you see is iron brew everywhere. Um, so where did that, where yeah, did that, no, where did I, that come from? Yeah, no, I haven't got any. He couldn't tell me that. All he, all he knows is that you know. His grandparents no, from Yorkshire and his support and they support Leeds. That's all we know. He don't know. <laughs> no, it's from, it's from my missus' side. My missus' grandparents. Are from, my missus' uh, grandparents from Newcastle, so they're quite close to the uh, the Scottish. Mate, there, close to Scotland, but it's not Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> right, now ask me a question, pigs. It's my question. <laughs> mate, right? Sit there and be quiet. <laughs> go, go, stroke your cat. <laughs> Yeah, he's out in the garden, mate, having a wonder. Trying to catch some flies. Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> yeah, I bet he is. Uh, gents, um, thank you very much for your time today. Much appreciate you getting up no to speak to us today. Thanks for the memories over the last couple of seasons. And, um, yeah, we just we just wait to hear what's going to happen for the end of this season and hopefully start prepping for the next one. But thank you very much for your time. No problems. Thanks very much, guys. No, no hey, guys, problem. stay safe. Stay chat. safe, thank yeah. You. See you, everyone. Cheers, chat. Thank, thank you. Take care. Take care, boys. See you later. Bye-bye, Right, that is it for this week's show. Um, Stu, thank you very much for joining us once again. Thank you. George, thank you. Thank you. And Stu, this is it now, isn't it? We're done. Well, unless we start playing again, but let's hope we don't know what the result of the um, the vote is. It's like Eurovision, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think I should do like a live, a live vote. On the people EFL. are actually genuinely interested in this vote. Live vote. So it's not like Eurovision. Daryl McAntony on a live vote when he realises he's lost. Yeah, but yeah, it's going to be our last one unless we're actually the season starts again. Yes, so unless there is any football, we, we, we do not anticipate being here next week, but I'm sure we'll be around and about with updates and chat and things like that over the course of the next couple of months when things become clear. So just keep looking out for us on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and also keep an eye on 9yrspodcast.org for any and all updates from us but that is it uh, thank you very much for listening to us for this season as it stands we appreciate all the feedback we get we're glad that you're enjoying the shows and still listening we don't do it of course without you i know that sounds a cliche but it is 100 percent true once again from george goodbye thank you goodbye. Get a hit up. Stu, thank you goodbye goodbye stay safe everyone and from me, goodbye. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Stay indoors. Or not stay indoors. Follow the advice, whatever it is. Stay alert. Go in, Alexa go out. Go in, go out. Exactly. We just don't know. Um, Alexa Bliss bag first and last. And we shall speak to you again at some point in the future. <laughs>